Wonderful to see you. Everybody. Just looking at the screen here. Touch that and get rid of you. There, so I can see you. Um, this evening, I wanted to to talk about building communities through creativity, and I think it's something that as teachers and educators and people in the public and so on, we think about those things. Um, it's a topic that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, we're we've gone through a pandemic, or maybe we're still in the middle of one, and I think that a lot of us feel. Um, that we've become um, maybe not as engaged with our communities or that there's a need to think about community again. So that was a bit of the reason for, for bringing it up as a topic. Um, at our last jam session, we talked a bit about the negative aspects of creativity and some of the things that might come up for different concepts and so on. But tonight I'm really looking at a very positive way that creativity um, can enrich our lives. So I've got kind of a switch from what we were talking about last week or last time. Um, so I really wanted to kind of investigate a few things. And um, I'm also bringing in a special guest with me tonight, uh, Sarah Pan on the screen right now. Sarah, if you could wave everybody. Um, she um, is a, a wonderful singer songwriter in Nova Scotia and uh, working on a very interesting community project. So what I'm hoping this evening is that, well, I'll kind of give a preamble a little bit as we always do. And then uh, for people to share the various projects that they know about or have heard about um, that really look at uh, the, the way in which creativity has been the catalyst for the community. And I think it's one of the things, I think it's one of the richest things that we can do as educators and people in the public and so on interested in creativity is is thinking of ways that we can use creativity to build community and bring people together. So I, I looked at uh, what community is, and you know, a very simple definition is a group of people uh, who share common interests, goals, and visions. Uh, strong communities, it's really interesting reading about them and thinking about them, um, usually have a very strong sense of identity, fellowship. They trust each other. There's well-being involved. Uh, feeling better about who they are and, and what they do. Uh, it's empowering. It also is often, often communities that are really healthy are very inclusive. They bring in a lot of different voices and different people from different areas and, and professions and backgrounds and cultures. Um, also, they stress engagement, problem solving, uh, provide a chance for social interaction, and often are very passionate uh, and joyful in, in many of the things they do. So that's a healthy, the description of a healthy community. In terms of positive creativity, if that's an area we can discuss, um, people who are involved in creative activity often talk about um, a sense of, of self-esteem, um, that they gain confidence, that they learn how to solve problems, that they find new ways to solve problems, um, that they have experienced personal growth, um, through the process of doing creative activities. They improve their communication and they expand their communication. So they're not just communicating maybe verbally, but they discover video or they, they start to play a musical instrument or they learn how to dance or they learn how to write a fantastic poem or maybe they're an engineer and they develop some new machine. So there's a lot of growth involved and a new form of communication to get there. Also the connectedness of it. I mean, if that's the one thing that the pandemic really did a number on was how to connect us again. Like it, you know, it, it was hard for us and now we're trying to reconnect. So I think creativity provides that. Also, it often creates very positive energy and a sense of joy. So people who um, are musicians or artists or, or engineers or business people, whatever, when they come up with a new idea or they get involved in a creative project, often talk a lot about feeling a sense of passion, but also uh, of joy. So I think that those two things, uh, the, the community and creativity, have a lot in common. Um, uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to mention um, also is that um, uh, Keith Sawyer, I mentioned him in the little, in the little write-up, is someone who writes a lot. I don't know. If, I mean, probably a lot of you know his name. Um, he's a, a researcher of creativity. He also um, started as a jazz musician. I think he still is. And I know several of the people in Scenic are jazz musicians. And um, he talks a lot about improvisation and how um, uh, when you bring people together um, and a collective idea of creativity, not just the individual and what can happen on that level, but what happens when you bring people together? How do we build 
um, uh, collective creativity? What happens? How do we feed off each other and strengthen the group as a whole? And so he talks a lot about that and uh, it, he's done some really interesting projects on that. Um, and so what he's saying is that we can concentrate on the creativity of individuals, which a lot of us talk about and think about, but also think about how that, how it transforms community. So it can be a group activity as well. So his idea is that um, creativity that is in a community can actually enrich the members of that community. It can, can create a sense of excitement, engagement, a sense of belonging, um, and a sense of accomplishment, which I thought was really interesting, that idea of like, you know, we put on a play or we've done this amazing, amazing thing or developed a, a new machine or whatever it is we're doing. It may be um, uh, come up with a new concept of how to solve a problem. So that the kind of uh, energy that comes from it is very positive, can be very positive. I wanted to mention one of his projects that he's been working on, I thought was fascinating about uh, taking a community a bit into, you know, just how we can look at communities across the globe. He has one right now called Community Soundscape Project. I don't know if anyone's heard of that one, um, but what it he involves, it involves improvisation, community and social practice. And so what he's got going on, it's a, it's a major collective research project and it's happening in Canada. Australia and Ireland. And what he's had, what he's got communities doing in those places is recording the sounds of their community. What does their community sound like? <laughs> the different places in the community and different activities going on in the community. And so they're putting together this amazing global um, project, listening to the sounds of communities. And not only are the, the so what's happening is that those communities are exploring the sounds of their community. What does it sound like? What are all the different things that are going on there? But they're then sharing those sounds through audio, you know, production and so on with other cultures in the world. So you're listening to what a culture sounds like in another country. So a really interesting idea of how to um, not only for the identity of those those cultures themselves or those communities in those countries, but also thinking about community in a broader sense and doing it through a really creative project. So that's the kind of thing that, that uh, he works on, a lot of different ideas around that. And really big on the idea of um, people exploring their own identities and also gaining insights and inspiration by connecting with other communities and sharing the results obviously with each other. Um, it, and, so a lot of times he also, because he's a musician, talks about music and music being a, an amazing way to build community. And I know a lot of you probably have, you know, again, I know there's a lot of musicians in this group, um, know what that's about. I mean, whether you're singing, whether you're performing as a group and so on. So I wanted to to now just to, to mention again I, that Sarah's here tonight with us. And um, we were chatting about uh, these this concept of building uh communities through creativity and she wanted to share um, some of the, the things that she's been working on um, and something that we both know about because we spend time in the Annapolis Valley in Nova Scotia. So Sarah, if you'd like to say a few words about what you've been doing, it would be really great. Thank you, Mary. And hi, everyone. It's nice to be here again tonight and uh, and share with you just a little bit about um, about what what's you know what Mary and I have kind of witnessed and then what more recently I've been involved in um, initiating here this fall. Um, wow, that was a really in about ten minutes, Mary. I can't believe how well you summed up creativity's role in community. <laughs> I'm just like blown away over here. <laughs> Um, and so, so well put. Um, so we have, uh, I'm, I'm a music therapist and a registered yoga instructor, and I, I do a lot of different programs, but the one that I'm most excited about at the moment, actually, it's more of a social type of activity. It's held at a local community hall. Um, and it's, this hall is inspiring to me and it's run by a few people within that community. And in talking with the folks at the hall, they, they really, they were concerned about um, some of the, reaching some of the folks within their community, folks who, who really don't venture beyond their rural borders of this, of this neighborhood, other than other, 
you know, they would go for groceries or have groceries brought in. But other than that, their community hall is kind of their home base. Um, so um, this, this couple, I'll give you their names. They're actually Ruth and Jerry. They're the, they're the lead couple up at that community hall. And they wanted to start um, a, a social, uh, hoping to draw, get some traction, hoping to spark some interest within the community, within um, mostly within their seniors within the community. So folks, um, they had a lot of folks kind of in their late seventies and their eighties, early nineties, who, um, who they wanted to, they just wanted to bring together for another reason, other than um, performances or for bingo or um, um, some of the other um, exercise programs. And so uh, they, they've started this Wednesday or we've started this Wednesday program where we've, um, we bring in, we, we do a lunch for folks. So we have two locally made soups. So we've hired a woman within the community who makes beautiful soups from scratch with local organic ingredients, I've been told. And so she has two options for us and fresh homemade rolls. I know I'm gonna make everybody hungry, especially you folks out West who it's only four o'clock. You're gonna to wanna to have soup and rolls for supper. Anyway, so we sit down together. Uh, we, we have lunch for an hour and then we stay for another hour. Um, and we, um, we do some chair exercises together. We laugh, we dance on the spot. We do some breathing um, and then we move into a musical portion of the program and for about a half an hour we all just kind of sing and although I'm leading it it's actually really neat to see the dynamic of the group and how folks are coming forward with thoughts. It's, a, it's, it's, it's naturally a safe space to be able to share oh that song made me think of this and or what about this song can we do this can we do this number or I'd really like to sing around with this, this group. So it's interesting that although I am technically the facilitator, I really feel like um, it's, it's an environment that, you know, through the social time, through the movement, through the breathing, we are establishing a safe space so that we can then raise our voices together and, and make a joyful sound whether it's laughing or whether it's harmonizing or whether it's just singing out and not even caring how it sounds, we're just creating this joy. Like Mary said, there's a joy that's happening there. There's kind of a levity that's there. But it's, uh, it's been really, really interesting to watch it from, from kind, of, kind of just over the weeks, how it's evolved. It start, we started in October. We, um, we were able to get a couple of grants to help us get it off the ground. So um, with not a lot of funding, actually, we've been able to launch this thing and it's been happening weekly and we've been getting anywhere between 20 and 25 people out per week, which is small, but mighty. And we are prepared to have 40 in that, in that space. And I would anticipate that by the spring, we probably will have about, you know, in, in the thirties, at least for our participants. It's five dollars a pop for folks to come and for their soup mostly, but then we get to spend that quality time. It's on Wednesdays from twelve until two, and it's called Welcome Wednesdays. And it's not just welcome; it's W E L L um, hyphen um, come C O M E. So you know, everybody come. It's going to focus on wellness, um, and so that's the gist of the program. But that has me thinking about all the components that work and why would that work? And um, one of the women who came, she, uh, she was a nurse and she traveled a, all, a lot all over Canada. And she said, if you have food at something, generally speaking, people will want to come. People will enjoy that together. So there's like, like the creative um, nourishing component of having something offered for food. And then there's, there's the movement, the breathing, that connectivity, and then of course, music and, and really trying to encourage music making that is, um, that is heartfelt, but also that is, um, everybody, um, everybody's encouraged to just sing out. And, uh, um, and we also have some hand percussion and that kind of thing. And one of the other volunteers plays the drums. So every now and again, he'll sit down and, um, and he'll play the kit and and kind of just mix it up and amplify the the experience. 
So I know I'm on a little bit of a, this is just a lot of information to kind of share all at once, but it's been really exciting to, uh, to be involved with. It's, it's a small um, initiative, um, but it's a, I think it's a great example of what can be done with not a whole lot, but a few people's commitment to making it happen. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like there are going to be two more starting in the new year in uh, the adjacent communities. Fantastic, it's spreading, that's fantastic. Oh, thank you, Sarah, that's really wonderful. And and, and that's again, very, a very easy kind of simple thing there. And, and it's interesting, the place she's talking about is called the Speakeasy. They have another program called Speakeasy. And during the pandemic, they were running a Speakeasy. And uh, this community is about, I mean, really, there's about 45 people in the community. There's hardly anyone there. And the speakeasy was this this joyous little place where they had performances and so on and tiny, tiny community. So what Sarah's doing um, is happening with a, in a very, very small area, but attracting people from other places to come there and experience it as well. But also the community itself is coming together in that program. So thank you very much, Sarah. It's great to hear to hear about that project. Um, so I just oh, want to... I just wanted to oh, thank you. I wanted to open it up to other people who have um, have examples of that. Maybe you have um, a project on the go right now, uh, or you know of something really exciting. Um, that would be great to hear from you. Great. There's two hands up. Um, there's three hands up. Um, Stan, are you? Are you? Yep. Yeah, uh, Fred great. first, then Gerard, and then I think Michael or Blaine after that, I believe. Okay. Great. Super. Well. Thinking of Mary, your introduction, mm. I had looked at the title and the prompt, and I thought of all the times that community created creativity. Yes, exactly. it, like last month was a great example for many of us. It jarred us mm -hmm. because yes. we never were in that mindset of thinking about the negative aspects of it. Yeah, and so that yeah. just broke us out, and I and one of the schools. I went and joined and I joined because of the creativity on the staff. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, right, um, yeah. They had 17 first year teachers. And so they formed a Wednesday morning coincidence, but a Wednesday morning survival group where <laughs> they, they were just trying to give these new teachers yeah. strategies to get through this startup. And there was so many of them. But it became such a rich environment. Wow, that's Us fantastic! Veterans joined it, and yeah. it was cross curricular. It yeah. was fantastic. the diversity. Learning with art teachers and with music teachers was so powerful, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that diversity of thought that we have it just yeah. stimulates us to see and to act and to react in different ways than before. Because yeah. when you put all of the same teachers together or same whatever together, we're all in a rut. We all think the same way. We test the same way. We um, create the same way. And we need people that jar us, that give mm -hmm. us the new eyes. And so mm -hmm. I was really thinking along those lines. But as soon as you started to share some of the things, the soundscape really resonated with me because... Yeah. Uh, in my church settings, quite often we're exposed to uh, people that said, oh, we need to teach you the African way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is so full of joy and movement and excitement. Yeah. Yeah. And middle um, class Western civilization is so staid and, mm -hmm. and calm. And you, you bring in those soundscape elements mm -hmm. from a different mm -hmm. culture. And we're all up moving and we're all starting to yell out things that just give us joy. So uh, that that triggered with me. Uh, but I also was thinking of some of the things that we've done that really helped. And again, diversity was a big part. So we would have um, every three months or so, we would have a cultural evening. Oh, yeah. And great. what it was was an opportunity for people to express their creativity. Mm -hmm. And so there would be a poet followed by a musician. Mm -hmm. There would be photographers and artists work being shown on the screen behind us. And we just rotate through and it yeah. gave people a voice. Yes. But it also exposed us to other things. Yeah. And one of my friends was the 
curator of a small gallery uh, mm -hmm. in a church foyer, mm -hmm. uh, but once a month she would have uh, an evening which had some food like snacks, etc. But again, there would be a musician, there would be a poet, and the art would be up there. Yep. But again, it brought in people to talk together. We'd wander the exhibits, we'd um, listen to the music, we'd listen to the poet, mm -hmm. and just experience the creativity in different ways. And when you're standing with somebody looking at something and you're going, I just don't see it, and somebody else starts to talk and you're going, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I needed to get. So I think the, the two aspects then is one, when we get communities, mm. they expose us to new ways of seeing and, and um, thinking that stimulates creativity. Disney's famous for doing this. Yes, they do yeah. it all the time. And I was listening to one guy, oh, I can't even remember his name, but he talked about naive experts. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that stuck with me because these naive experts, they'll say the darndest questions, yeah, yeah. but it shakes us up. Yes, and makes us exactly. think in new ways. Yeah, so that's all. Oh, for <laughs> thanks for those excellent comments, and uh, yeah, we have to. And when with community, you are sharing, right? You you're sharing, you're getting new ideas, and and you grow from that. So yeah, that was the really interesting comments. Thank you. Um, I don't know who was next. Uh, uh, Gerard was next. Hi, Gerard. Yeah. Hey, Gerard. Hi. Um, I, I I put a link in the uh, the chat, and it's a service that I'm offering as a creativity consultant. And it's a program, a process called Drawing Connections Process. And it actually was born out of a, a larger project from a number of years ago. I worked with the Canadian Mental Health Association. I was a creative process facilitator mm. in, a pro, uh, in an initiative called the Creative Collaborative Communities Initiative. And what we did was um, I, I designed a, this process and um, using uh, an art-based process, bringing as many mental health stakeholders together uh, to uh, trying to uh, create a, a person-centered care model. So it's, um, and it was, uh, it was actually a really uh, interesting process. It was actually a provincial wide project because it was, there were two branches of the Canadian Mental Health Association, the Housing University's Health and Human uh, Performance, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Self-Health Connection. So, uh, you know, we had first voice that was involved with, um, with this project. Um, both working on the project as well as participating in, in it. And, uh, you know, not unlike other uh, government uh, funded programs, it was uh, funded for a year and then it disappeared, unfortunately. Uh, but fortunately, some things that came out of it um, uh, here in Halifax, the, uh, at the libraries, you actually have a social worker because we had some people from the Halifax library participate in this. Mm -hmm. And they, they realized that, hey, wait a minute, we need some, um, someone in the library to work with community members that were coming in, you know, experiencing mental health um, issues and that. So, um, so it was, um, and there was actually a research component in that as well. So the um, uh, Dr. Fenton um, and I believe they moved back out west. Um, I'm not sure. Um, so this was, like I said, it was a number of years ago. But uh, and. Um, and, and it's funny because I, I think one of my first times participating in, in uh, one of the events here, um, and I, I think it was Fred that I, I kind of um, talked about the uh, Etchen Wagner's uh, community of practice. Um, that 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 became uh, part of that structure of that program, and and continues on in this process that I'm offering now. So, mm, wow. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. Wonderful. One great suggestions too. Thank you. That's wonderful. Um, I don't know who was next. Uh, Blaine was next. Blaine? Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here and to uh, th thank you for your comments earlier, Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, very inspiring. I've just completed, uh, well, I'm in the process of wrapping up uh, my teaching for the fall term in which I taught two sections of imagination, creativity, education to 96 uh, intermediate senior pre-service teachers. <laughs> and the whole point of the, or one of the major goals that I have in terms of this course is developing 
uh, by the end of the course, a community of learnership. Yeah, yeah. And there are certain, you know, over the years, I've I've come to realize that most of my students coming in have low self-efficacy, mm. uh, a high level of uh, vulnerability and mm. the fear of vulnerability yeah. and are hesitant, reticent about uh, putting themselves out there and uh, many of them believing that they're not, quote unquote, a creative person. Right, right. And yes. through the process of the course, we look at things like, you know, the first half of the course, we're simply looking at concepts like curiosity, imagination, creativity, uh, education, innovation, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Then they go out on a practicum for five weeks. And when they come back, then we get into the process, the creative process itself. Mm -hmm. And we keep, and one of the things that I've done all the way through is that each class is broken up into coteries mm -hmm. of about five five members and each of those coteries have weekly assignments that they they need to do and they need to co collaborate mm -hmm. on they need to uh, actually exchange many ideas and of course they're all built around uh, imagination creativity activities mm -hmm. Lately, uh, as I've wound up, I just got through interviewing each of my students over the course of the last three and a half days in terms of their exit project and all the rest of it. And what was coming out of that and what was coming back to me loud and clearly is that as a result of the structuring of the course, they really felt that they had built strong communities of learnership, both in their cadre and in the relationships with each other. I heard words like relationships, friendships, mm -hmm. breaking down barriers, camaraderie, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the generation of ideas that I would never have been able to do on my own and things of this nature. And so I think that uh, for me and for the students that I was privileged to work with this past fall, the whole idea of community of learnership, mm -hmm. distinct very distinct from community of learners yes, has yeah. been a concept that they have not only come to know and understand, but more importantly, embody and enact. Mm, sounds fantastic. Thank you, Blaine. That's really wonderful. And wonderful. I love, I love the title. Hey, you know, the, the changing it to um, learnership with really Thank interesting you. focus. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Sharon. I mute myself. Well, I was asked by a center on the South Shore uh, who got a grant from Canadian Heritage to work with a group of people who signed up for the joy of art. Mm -hmm. And with that, I decided it was going to be joyful and fun. So I had a joke. I had some philosophy. And then I had a community gathering of people who held hands and accepted each other who would not necessarily ever come together uh, mm. any other time. But we, I mm. had the um, privilege of working with this whole group uh, throughout the pandemic. And the kind of bonds that did establish themselves were friendships and uh, letters and emails and telephone calls back and forth. And some of the people were on their own or dealt with loss or whatever it was that anyone was dealing with. We were a community who held hands and mm -hmm. supported each other. So we went to see a, a couple of shows as, as a group. And then a student had a potluck uh, gathering for um, us a picnic in, in the back of her yard at her home. And um, there uh, it was announced that the, they were going to give the grant to something different, not to art. So mm -hmm. my students were so disappointed, they asked if they could hire me. Oh, wow. And I thought for a minute and I thought, yes, I loved the challenge of teaching. Uh, I had one student who was a graphic artist. I had uh, three teachers. I had just people from various walks of life and experience. But what we did do is we sold 65% of our art framed to raise money for the center. And we all felt so good about that. That's and it bonded us. Yes, yes. And the bonding, that's a really, uh, that's a fantastic project. 
That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I have space. Sorry. It's a small class. So um, um, <laughs> I'll put my email in the chat. I have maybe three places. I just want a small group again. Yeah. Um, if somebody's interested, mm -hmm. um, Michael is a good reference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an artist and a teacher. Thank you. I love it. Thank you so much. And uh, again, bonding is such an important part of bringing communities together. And if we can do it through creativity, then there's also that lovely joy that comes from making things together together and so on. So yeah, thank you so much. That's wonderful. Um, uh, Stan, who is here? Uh, Christine is next. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I'm not, I wasn't sure what I was stepping into this evening, <laughs> because it's my <laughs> first time here. Um, but I certainly can echo some of the things that were said. I, I understand completely what Blaine, Blaine was talking about, um, dealing with students that have low self-esteem, mm -hmm. no confidence, they feel they don't have a voice, and through creativity and arts-based activities, having them find that that voice at, at the end. And then the idea of bonding that, that Sharon mentioned, um, yeah. this is what I really wanted to talk about initially. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure when you were talking about the negative creativity last time, which would have been fascinating to hear yeah. whether maybe this came up, but <clears throat> I actually had some positive experiences, many positive experiences during the COVID isolation mm -hmm. by bonding through Zoom uh, yes. <laughs> in, in ways that <clears throat> really surprised many of us because being involved in academia, we'd often think, okay, we'll see you at the next conference. That's yeah. when we'll talk about the next project. Yeah. And people were very willing to reach out Yes. in ways that I don't think they would have in person because mm -hmm. you were at a session like this or or ones that that had many more people and active chats you know where people are are just putting in their their emails all the time yes. and and then people would say oh can we connect and and I've done so many projects because of that with people across the globe and and just today actually i'm i'm guessing that many of you are from the east coast um i'm in southern ontario mm -hmm. and just submitted a major grant project to do a project with um with the college i'm at in ontario mm -hmm. with a community center in in st john's newfoundland and that never would have happened because i never even went to st john's before and and we're doing a project that will involve hopefully many other grant projects because we want to gamify um training materials and yeah. so this is just a needs assessment for that but so there's that was from a zoom connection and mm -hmm. and then the other one just came through today was is going to be a global learning opportunity where my electrical technician students are going to create diy projects that are going to go to kids in Croatia oh, and wow. to kids yeah. in New Zealand. And we had done this before and they went to orphanages in Morocco oh, because cool. during COVID teachers were looking for material. And so my students have to do a capstone project to industry leaders. You know, they're not good at presenting because they've never had to do this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they created these DIY recordings. So they find it much easier to record themselves and be live, you know, <laughs> and, and they were showing, you know, how to make pizza, how to make circuit boards, how to do all these different things, card tricks. Um, and teachers were actually using this because they were stuck too because during covid they you know they weren't prepared so so we were actually helping them while they were providing that audience for us and and it just keeps getting bigger and you know there's other projects too wow. but it was all because of zoom because there's no way we would have even considered this because you would have had to travel you would have had to put a huge expense yeah. Yeah. Um, with with some of these projects, whereas this way we're finding a different way to do it. So the idea of creativity, again, to think differently and and oh, great. In a sense, take a negative and turn it into a positive. Positive, exactly. Oh, that's those are just great ideas. And I love the idea of these things going global and you know the DIY videos. I mean, great project <laughs> and sharing that again. The, and you know, just and I think 
getting excited about what we can do. And you're right about Zoom. There are some really good things about it. And we were connecting um, in, in new ways. And I think we had to be creative about it. How can we use this, this new tool, this new way of communicating in creative ways and build communities? So thank you so much for your comments. Great. Standing with uh, no, no other hands at this point, but I just wanted to kind of echo yeah. something that Christine had said, like Mary, you very much know and the other committee members that Zoom was a very powerful tool for us to be yeah. able to actually to, to get together, right? Like, I mean, many of us on the committee did not actually meet in person until uh, October. Yeah. And we've been doing this for, for quite some time, right? So it's interesting as you look at building communities where where and I and I often kind of kind of kind of laugh a little bit that my background is very different from most of the other committee members here, but that you have a sense of belonging and a sense of joy. And I like the use of the word joy because joy is very different than happiness. Happiness can be short-lived. I tend to look at the word happy like a roller coaster. It's something you look forward to, but can be often fleeting in the end, whereas in joy is a continuous feeling that stays with you, right? Like, I mean, and Fred had said something about, about with being in his church and we're part of two different churches, my wife and I. So we're quite familiar with the, with the use of joy in that sense. And that's something where when you're in your creative element, there is a sense of joy. I often look at myself as not being necessarily creative. That's how I kind of immediately view myself because I don't paint. I don't, I play, I play an instrument, but poorly right so there so I don't immediately think of myself as creative but yet when when I take a look at some of the writing that I'll do that I don't immediately see as artful then it totally takes on a very different passion like if I'm doing a sermon for church and while I'm stressing over making sure I'm writing it all out but then there's a passion and a joy to being able to do that that I don't often appreciate till after that it's done and I can take time to look back and reflect on that so I think part of as we're looking at building communities through creativity it's it's to keep an eye on the small things that we may not be noticing not necessarily the gigantic flashy things and and to build that joy into it right where there's going to be moments of extreme happiness there's going to be moments of minor disappointments but that we're continuously building a momentum where joy is always kind of sitting there as a as our ever present feeling about it yeah thank you for that and yeah and that positive part of it i mean that that uh, and and something for many of us i mean as, as blaine you were saying um the students we get at the university come in they're scared to death to try anything creative you know, they, they, they're, you know, they, they're so worried about trying something. So finding ways to um, engage them and to bring them forward and realize that creativity is a capacity that we all have. And, and it's some something that we can bring out. And that idea of doing it collectively sometimes really helps students and helps people to 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 do that, whereas individually they're more you know, nervous about something. So sometimes working together can really bring that out. So thank you for well, those. If I can interject, Mary, just on that point, because one memorable uh, uh, experience in the ice courses this past uh, fall was when we took the word pirate and we just exploded it. And uh, of course, then we had to come up with, uh, pirates had to come up with their own flag. They had to come up with the, their own ship design. They had to come up with their own unique names. Uh, they had to come up with, uh, you know, a history of themselves and things of this nature. And one of the most joyful parts to, to, to pick up on what Stan was saying was they also had to come up with their own song because every pirate crew I'm, of any note of had who had ever earned, quote unquote, their salt had yes. their own uh, pirate song. OK. And so if you can imagine uh, these cadres of uh, four or five at max six people coming to the front of the class and and singing their pirate song and you know and and uh, promoting themselves you know with their flag flying and all the rest of it <laughs> and that how enjoyable great. that was for everyone yeah. and then yeah. in the midst of one, <laughs> one of the productions we get a knock on our classroom door from the teacher next door who oh. come over and <laughs> in a very staid uh <laughs> uh stance and and voice said uh, 
would you mind not making so much noise? I'm trying to conduct a lecture next door. <laughs> and it was just the contrast of those two things. So, you know, this <laughs> we, we, shut our, we shut our door again. And it wasn't nearly quite as uh, boisterous afterwards, but it was nevertheless as joyful. And uh, it was really a bonding experience for, bonding. for everyone. Bonding. It really yeah. wasn't. And it, I love it. really led to that... Uh, feeling of a community of learnership that we're all not only am I responsible for my learning but I'm also responsible for my colleagues learning as well exactly so you, wonderful Bernard. wonderful example Blaine uh, the pirate <laughs> <laughs> to remember that one that's the pirate <laughs> yeah I love it oh it's super uh, uh Gerard uh well first of all Blaine the uh the uh, provincial anthem here in Nova Scotia is Barrett's Privateers. So just to <laughs> let you know. Um, the other thing was that I'm, I'm, I'm actually taking a course through Open University right now on online teaching, creating uh, programs for adult learners. And one of the one of the things was that they wanted to know um, a positive experience uh, in an online experience. And, and I consider um, uh, these jam sessions as uh, as a learning experience for myself, and uh, so I've seen it as really positive. Um, and then, of course, there were some other. Uh, I, I did a course, a uh, number of courses through IDOU, which is a, a design consultancy. And um, I, for me, the, the the distance thing is still a, an issue. And maybe it's maybe it's my age. I, I like face to face stuff more than online. But uh, yeah. Um, but it was, uh, again, this, for me, this has been a really great um, experience participating in these, these um, chats, so. Yeah. Great, thank you. I'm glad you mentioned, I mean, and in a way we are creating a community with the uh, Idea Jams because we do come together once a month and and share and and we're talking about creativity. <laughs> so hopefully we're being creative in, in the way we've uh, structured it and, and uh, and I think, again, uh, stressing some of the things that I mentioned, you know, initially about um, positive communities that, you know, they stress bonding and sharing and inclusion and so on. So, you know, hopefully the idea jams, we, we aim for those kinds of things in terms of uh, hopefully building a community of, of people who want to share and learn from each other. So, yeah, I mean, we can do these things online, which is what you were mentioning earlier. So there have been some positives for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Christine. Thanks. Um, it, yeah, I think that another part is the idea of the word fun and play. Mm -hmm. And just to bounce off what Blaine said, I've been in trouble so many times in my classes. Um, and and one that I thought was really interesting, I was, I was doing a co-teaching with a professor from Brock University who is an image movement theater specialist. She was my professor. And then we just wanted to work together. And we had a, a grant to do this project with communication students, which are usually doing a read, write, repeat model right. of a course. And, and this, you know, we have a PR video about it. A, a book came out ab about this project. Um, with the activities because they were always up and out of their seats. And we actually had um, a student that was being paid to record these sessions. And at, at one point that student couldn't be there. So she handed it off to someone else. And that student had taken this course before and because this is a mandatory course. Every student in the college has to go through this course. So she had taken it prior and she was recording what we were doing. And she actually said to the co-facilitator, she said, is this for credit? Are, are these students, you know, really getting a credit for this? This is too much fun. And, you know, and we laughed about it and it made it into the book. And we do presentations on this research project because of what had happened, you know, at, at the end. And, you know, we think it's kind of funny, but at the same time, it's very sad that, mm -hmm if something looks fun, it looks like it's not rigorous. And if yeah. something is fun and playful, it looks like it's not educational. Mm -hmm. And and during COVID, and I'm sure it was the same where, where you are, there was a lot of negativity about teachers and about education. And even prior to, to COVID, there was a lot of negativity about online learning. 
And, mm -hmm. and I think what I always found funny was that people talked about Zoom fatigue, which, you know, no doubt maybe some people had, but a bad a poorly designed meeting or a bad, badly run meeting is the same, whether it's face to face or on Zoom. And people seem to think, oh, no, you know, on Zoom, it's a bad meeting. Well, the same principles would apply. You know, I, I don't know about many of you, but you're all creativity people. So I'm sure you put a lot of thought into your presentations. And so even on Zoom, I would have music in the background. It was actually easier to to, I think, build community because I could queue up music. I could have images I wanted. I had breakout rooms. Whereas in face-to-face, -face, I'm walking into someone else's classroom. So mm. I sometimes don't have time to queue up music or make it a, a, a welcoming space because it's not my space. Whereas mm. the computer is my space. Yeah. You know, my room is my room. I can yeah. do whatever I, I want. So So it was just kind of funny that there were a lot of things going on there that you just flip it a little bit. Um, and I ended up running something called the playground, which seems like it was very similar to this. And it was, it was actually to try and say, you know what, there's positive things in education. Let's remember them and let's go back in our memories. Yes. And we ended up doing <clears throat> within like a four month span, 12 of these, because people wouldn't let me stop them. Wow. <laughs> and all it was, was I think it's very similar to what's happening here, that you just give the floor to people. And we use the playground as our metaphor or launching off, you know, point. And, um, and yeah, we're probably going to do a Christmas one because people want it back, but it was to celebrate the positive and to celebrate mm -hmm. education because there's so much education bashing and teacher bashing going mm -hmm. on. So we mm -hmm. wanted to counter that and we kind of didn't know <laughs> what, what would happen and it ended up taking off, as I said, so, it's almost like therapy, happen. like what Sarah was doing with the music therapy. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the way this ended up being because people after our sessions would then send me notes that they had journaled or they had drawn something. And all of these were very busy people. And we did it wow. really, really early in the morning. I feel sorry for our East coast people. Cause they were joining us at, or our West coast. They were joining us at like four in the morning, <laughs> <laughs> but they were there. That's, but they were there. Yeah. that's fantastic. Oh, I'd love to learn more about you. <laughs> about what you're doing with that sounds really great well i'll uh, invite you to the christmas one i'll send an okay. email out great. to everybody <laughs> <laughs> okay that would be wonderful thank you so much for your comments on that it's really exciting and and great that you were able to get that energy happening and getting people to share and having some fun and as you say you know we worry about we worry about fun it's like you know oh that can't be serious we can't do these things so um i think as fun is a sign of people being creative many times so yeah that's wonderful thank you um uh stan i don't know i'm looking for floor is still yours okay Keep great processing ideas that's oh. what's been really good about this topic tonight is that you know this this is kind of really deep right we're looking at different ways that we can build within our communities and and you know i didn't real. i've kind of forgot that we're our own little community here so right like this this is this is really good so back over to you <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Dan. I, I think uh, I think uh, Michael's got his hand up. And thanks, thanks very much, Mary, and and, and thanks, Stan, for noticing me. I'll I'll get you for this. Um, <laughs> um, most of most of what I've heard this evening uh, reminds me that um, you know we, uh, particularly those of us who come from a Western European culture. Um, you know, we today we're often criticized because we're all on silos of information where we don't communicate with one another and we don't even communicate with ourselves very well. Um, and uh, uh, so as a, um, a backlash to that and as a counterpoint of that, there has become uh, a fairly major holistic movement, uh, particularly in North America, uh, which asks us who come, I guess, primarily from Western European cultural background, uh, to reconsider the human soul uh, as part of our makeup and as part of our being. Um, you know, I'm always reminded that when we ask our indigenous populations uh, about a holistic being, uh, they have no idea what we're talking about because they live that. That's uh, the basis of their culture. And um, we've had references to uh, certain African cultures 
uh, being so different than the uh, Western European, largely on that basis that um, they see themselves as whole human beings mm. uh, that have uh, physical attributes, mental attributes, um, spiritual attributes, and also attributes of the soul. And so it reminded me of uh, the idea that much of our conversation tonight, when we talk about adults, we're talking about remediation, uh, putting back into our lives what was once there. Mm -hmm. I just spent the day with my wife looking after my 18 month um, granddaughter today. That's why the hairs at the back of my neck are still standing up. And um, she, she's a, a tiger of energy as so many 18 month olds are. But uh, it, it, it also reminds me of the experience that uh, young children don't have the kinds of problems that we need to discuss about this evening. Uh, it's still all there. So what is it that happens to kids that turns them into the automatons of information in siloed fields? Well, I have to blame the formal school system. Uh, I, you know, it's funny, I give kindergarten teachers a break. I think they've got things pretty right. Uh, but I think in graduate school, we need, we need sand tables and water tables um, to keep ourselves together in body and in soul. And so I'm reminded of all of that and uh, wondering if there isn't um, a more fundamental way in which we be can begin to change our culture. Maybe it's because of the uh, multicultural influence in this country in particular. Maybe we have a chance uh, to feel that we can become more together again, more at peace with ourselves and each other, and with feelings of our own individual and collective souls. Yeah, well said. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Really, really interesting perspective. Thank you. Um, Fred. What Michael just triggered was when I went and did a practicum in a small community in central BC. Uh, I was a physics teacher or science teacher and a math teacher, but I went into the science room and there was all these brand new wave tables and sand tables, never been used. Little did I know they were over 20 years old. So they existed, but they weren't being utilized. And so I remember the shock on the kids' faces when they came in the next day and they're looking around going, what's going on? <laughs> and I'm going, we're going to do a lab. <laughs> What's that? Because <laughs> they had never done a lab. And here they are, secondary science students. Yeah, the we do in enculturate and drive out the sense of play mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. enjoyment. And to even in some of the primary classes I go into, they have what's called free play. <laughs> because so many times we structure our play in order to manage it in the way we want. And so I think uh, a lot of it uh, the, uh, we're talking about tonight in this community of learners mm -hmm. or learnership mm -hmm. is that we are um, freeing ourselves from mm -hmm. some of the constraints that hold us back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Really, really good points, Fred. Thank you so much for those. Um, Another hand, I see some, another hand up. Okay. Uh, Sharon, yep. Sharon. <clears throat> My first teaching experience uh, was elementary school one to three, and then I taught preschool for a decade. So the sand table, the water table, they all got very well used, as did the free play. And just the joy that the children had in that freedom to express whatever they wanted goes with the Reggio Emilia. Uh, philosophy, which I was very privileged to experience in Reggio Emilia, Italy. The philosophy is whatever the children are interested in, that's what you're going to be doing with the class. So their concentration, and I watched these young children concentrating on clay, on paint, on, and, and whatever they created was amazing. So mm -hmm. I realized that the child's interest, the student's interest is really important. And I call the course that the students asked for, 
the, the, uh, the class you asked for, but it's very much the Reggio principle of following the student's interest. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And, and uh, great, Sharon, I was just thinking about the same with a community, you know, like the follow the interests of a, of a group of people. What do they want to do and what do they, and it, make that happen, whether it's giving grant money or, you know, people supporting it somehow, making it happen um, would be, yeah, it would be really interesting. And, and I love that, the idea of what following what children want to do, because <laughs> we don't do that. We shape them pretty quickly into, into other directions. So thank you so much for those comments. Uh, as we're approaching the end, Mary, do you want to kind of cap us up and then I'll close us out after that? Sure. Um, well, thank you, everyone, for sharing your ideas about community. Uh, I just think that we're at a point where, again, because we have been separated and we have, um, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to, to keep going. Uh, but I think reaching out and forming uh, connections with other people and finding, you know, common interests and bonding with other people um, and sharing. Um, there's so many different creative activities and, and ways that we are creative anyway. Um, and not just restricted to the arts, obviously, it could be any in any way. Um, I think it just really does bring about a, a sense of joy and togetherness and connecting with others. Um, and that's the way we move forward. I mean, we wouldn't have moved anywhere as a civilization without creativity. We would have been back conforming to the same things over and over again. So creativity is what drives us forward. But I think sometimes, um, again, going back to that fear that students have and people have about being creative, it's like, oh, I can't create it. I'm not creative. I haven't got a creative bone in my body. If you are working with a group and you maybe you put on a, a theater production or you, you know, you experience being part of a choir or you, you know, you're, you go to a, a fantastic event where you know you're you're you get excited about what they're doing maybe it's a music event or it wouldn't matter what it was but it's getting exciting getting feeling engaged with something feeling that you 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 belong and, and you're taking part in something i just think it's so good for us so again creativity positive aspects of it is that that sense of well-being and uh, personal growth uh, connecting so many positive things come from um, just taking that risk and joining something, getting involved, and 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 starting things ourselves to um, if uh, to to bring people together. So, hopefully, uh, we can do that in our work as well as in our own personal lives. So, thank you very much for sharing tonight. Great stories, uh, wonderful ideas. So, I'm really pleased to have that chance to hear all, hear what you have to say today. It was really really wonderful. Stan, I'll turn it back to you. You betcha. And just I want to echo what Mary said. I want to thank you all for your participation, your listening and your sharing this evening. We really do look forward each month to our time together through our shared journey to, to, to see what we can talk about, to enhance our creative thinking, to explore our imaginations and just having this time to be able to talk. I want to especially thank Sarah and Mary this evening for our topic. And we're hopeful that your time is valued here. And we're excited for you to join us again next time. Yeah. Thank you for those of you that have been with us since September. This has been a great set of jams so far. So as always, please keep an eye on your emails after Christmas for our first idea jam of 2023 coming up in January. Our host will be Jillian Judson and Alexis Milligan. And our topic will be misunderstanding. How do we understand the words imagination and creativity? Mm -hmm. So we hope that you can join us again then. As a reminder, if you want to see what other idea jams are coming up, bios and other media links to some of our past jams, please visit our website at www. Now, this is all one big word, www.CanadianNetworkForImaginationAndCreativity.com. And as we close out finally for this evening, on behalf of Alexis and myself and all of our Scenic Committee members, we hope you have a safe and happy holiday, moments to spend time with your friends and family, time to reflect, time for a break and time to renew. We look forward to seeing you again in the new year. So have a Merry Christmas. Have a happy start to your new year and season's greetings. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Good night.